I have a bad habit of accumulating things. Now, not all the things are made equal. Many of the things that are in this beautiful, sad little shed are uh, like personal mementos from my real life and that remind me that I did in fact have that real life. I find something deeply gratifying about picking up like uh, like this tab book of all the songs from Led Zeppelin IV. I haven't actually used this in a very long time, but I had it when I was a teenager learning how to play guitar. And when I hold it and I look at it, I feel a connection to that time and that connection feels good. I almost get the sense that I'm living in some like B-budget science fiction movie where if I touch an object that has a relationship to the past, I'm able to time travel. The fact that I like that or want that probably is proof positive of how nostalgic I am at my core. Over the last couple of days, I've been making an inventory of the gear that I have in this shed with the plan of selling a huge chunk of it. And I've come face to face with how much I struggle with letting go of things from the past. Take this guitar pedal, for example. It's called the Fried Gold. It's made by a company called Yellow Cake. And um, I never use it. I haven't used it to affect the sound of my guitar in probably two years, maybe longer. I have used it in other applications in some of my older recording projects, and I like the things that it did in those applications, but on some level, I'm ready to part with this. But on another level, I'm really not. That nostalgic part of me remembers easily the moments when I did use this pedal, including because I just didn't have very many other pedals, and wants to cling to those moments through keeping this pedal. Now, some of you hear that and think, hoarder, hoarder, but some of you can maybe relate. And you might be thinking, look, Jordan, it's a teeny tiny box. Like, why are you worried so much about it? You can just keep it. I wanna set aside the financial reasons why I might sell this pedal, even though they are not inconsequential. But there's a deeper and maybe more important reason why I think it's a good idea to let these sorts of things go. And that's what I wanna think and talk about in this video. <laughs> Imagine that you're Ben Franklin in the legendary story of an old man in a wig standing out in the rain trying to capture electricity using a key that's attached to the string that's attached to a kite. Obviously, you're a person, you're down on the ground, the storm is up there in the sky somewhere. If you want to catch some lightning, where should you put the key? We've all been to eighth grade science and we know how the story goes. The answer is that you put the key up high next to where the kite is flying as close as possible as you can get to the lightning that you're hoping to catch. If you have the key down lower on the string, you might still catch some lightning, but odds are it would just take longer. And there you would be standing out in the rain, waiting for that moment to happen. And it's possible that the storm would just pass you by without it ever happening. If you're out in the rain, if your wig is wet and you want lightning, you put that key up as high as possible, as high as you can without like bringing down the kite or I don't know, this metaphor is falling apart. When I'm creating, I feel like Ben Franklin out in the rain trying to catch lightning. And most of the decisions that I make to actually inspire the thing that I'm trying to create are really about positioning the key, changing where it is on that long line of string between me and the inspiration somewhere up there in the sky. Now I have to be careful because I don't want to pick up something like the Earthquaker Data Corruptor, uh, which is like way outside of my comfort zone and will excite me to the point that I won't have any ideas. I'll just be like drawn into and fascinated by what all these knobs do without actually being able to connect that excitement to the tools that I have to make a song. But I don't want to go here. I don't want to go to a place that I'm so comfortable that I don't really get that inspired at all. The problem is sometimes I'll pick up a pedal like this or a song idea, like a theme that I've used time and time again, if I'm just desperate, I guess, or if I'm hoping that this thing that I've used in the past and that once upon a time made me feel electric, excited, inspired, that surely it's gonna do that again today. That's the quicksand. That's the nostalgic part of my brain starting to talk. I know I've tried time and again. I've had to finally accept that I can't time travel the way I need to 
by picking up an old device like this. Sure, it'll remind me of the good times, the times that I used it and that it did make me feel excited and really happy. But those memories don't drag forward that excitement into the future. They just summon a memory of that excitement. And that memory is kind of an illusion in the present tense. Experiencing that memory, that nostalgia, is very different from experiencing excitement, electricity, in real time. Because a guitar pedal, or a guitar, or an amplifier, or whatever, is not a yearbook. It's not something that's obviously bound up in the past. It still promises present tense electricity and satisfaction. And yet, I know that in many cases, I'm not gonna get that, at least not from everything. Right? So what I'm trying to do in the shed over the last few days and more generally in my life is since in the present tense, what are the things that still inspire me right now that make me feel alive and electric and that could put my key as close to the lightning as possible and what things don't do that. And if they don't do that, if they keep the key close to the ground, I've got to get rid of them. I don't have the time or the energy to use trying to summon old electricity and have that summoning fail. And so I'm going through everything that I have in this shed. Every pedal, every guitar, every amplifier, every weird box of capacitors that's over there in the corner, stuffed up there, you see it back there? Every single thing that I have and asking myself, does this actually inspire me today? And if it's supposed to be a tool, but in fact is just a relic, I'm going to get rid of it. And I don't like doing this. I'm trying to be cool and calm and collected, knowledgeable and insightful in this video, but in fact, my skin is crawling. This process has been excruciating because I am the nostalgic person. But I don't want to be that person. I want to be a person who, when I'm out in the shed, is making stuff. I'm trying to revise this space so that I will be surrounded by things that inspire and not things that lead me down the nostalgic rabbit hole. If you think I'm crazy, tell me about it in the comments. But if you know what I mean, if you feel those nostalgia pangs too, and keep gear that you don't use, uh, let me know that in the comments too. As always, I really appreciate your time. I hope you're doing well, especially this time of year. It's December 2023, by the way, and this is a time of year that for many people, the nostalgia can creep in and can get mixed in with the present tense in a way that can be very depressing. And uh, if you're in that place, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna get through this month just like you've gotten through this month in the past. Just hold on, you can do it. I believe in you. Like I said, thanks for your time and I'll see you around.